From the map of our planet, the last white spots have almost disappeared, and the most mysterious places have turned into popular resorts. But there are exceptions to this rule. When the sun sets over Keikaha Beach on Kauai Island, the tall silhouette of a mountain or cliff is outlined on the horizon. For most residents of the state, this is the only way to see the island of Nihau. It seems designed to attract tourists. However, it is a forbidden territory where no outsider can set foot. But before we begin, make sure you have subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with future content. This will greatly help us to produce more interesting videos for you. Nihau, the smallest inhabited island in the Hawaiian archipelago, has an area around 70 square miles, and its territory stretches about 17.5 miles from north to south. It is unique in many ways, not least because of its amazing history. But before I tell you more about it, let's go back to Scotland at the turn of the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1800, a girl named Elizabeth was born to a family of traders in Glasgow. It was impossible then to imagine the role she would play in the history of the Hawaiian Islands. By the age of 24, Eliza had grown into a beautiful woman and married Francis Sinclair, an experienced sailor and ship captain. The family grew quickly and by 1841 they had six children. It was then that the Sinclair family set out in search of a new life in New Zealand. Eventually they settled in Pigeon Bay, where they built a farm that provided a stable income. Everything was going well and the new place seemed like a dream home, but soon tragedy struck. Eliza's husband and her eldest son George disappeared at sea in 1846 during a business trip to Wellington. They were carrying all the family's money and goods. After the disappearance of her husband and son, Eliza and her children remained in Pigeon Bay. It was not easy for the woman to become the head of the family and support five children in a foreign country, but there was no other option, and she plunged into her work, succeeding in it and managing to save a small fortune to buy a ship, which she named Bessie. As the years went by, the children started their own families. The Sinclair clan, now numbering over 35 people, needed more land. Eliza then made the bold decision to move to Canada. After selling all their possessions, part of the family set off on their own ship. Dissatisfied with the conditions found on Vancouver Island, they considered moving to California. However, a friend named Heinrich Rose recommended that Eliza instead go to the Sandwich Islands, now known as Hawaii. The Sinclairs did just that. At the age of 63, Eliza led 13 members of her family to Hawaii, arriving in Honolulu Harbor on September 17, 1863. The 300-ton bark arrived fully equipped with merino sheep, a cow, hay, grain, chickens, a piano, books, and clothing. Eliza liked Hawaii at first sight and decided to stay there for a long time. Elizabeth managed to win the favor of Kamehameha IV, the then ruler of the archipelago. The monarch's sympathy was so great that he offered Elizabeth to buy several islands and plots of land from him. However, as it turned out, this was more of a desire to get rid of problematic land. Eventually, the widow bought the island of Niihau for $10,000. But before that, Kamehameha IV set one condition. He said, there may come a day when Hawaiians will not be as strong in Hawaii as they are now. When that day comes, please do everything possible to help them. The deal was completed by his brother, who took the throne, as Kamehameha IV soon died of chronic asthma. The residents of the island, known as Nihauans, were allowed to stay, but access to the island for outsiders became restricted. Only occasionally were some immigrants allowed to stay due to a shortage of labor. Thus, the island passed to the Sinclairs and their present descendants, the Robinsons. Nihau has been in the possession of this family for over 150 years. The Sinclair family began a new life on the exotic island. They built a large house on the west coast of Nihau and their own ranch. They respected the locals and tried to improve their lives. Many locals in turn worked on the Sinclair farm. They were satisfied with this arrangement and welcomed the changes brought by the new owners of the island. Soon, Elizabeth was elected chief of the native population of Nihau. But in the first year, Eliza realized why they were able to buy such a large island so easily. When the Sinclairs first saw Nihau, the island was lush and green and seemed like the perfect place to create a ranch. The King of Hawaii apparently did not tell them that the island had experienced two years of unusually wet weather. 
It turned out that Nihau is in the rain shadow of the nearby island of Kauai, located about 17.4 miles 28 kilometers away and receives much less precipitation. Drought on Nihau was so severe that locals had to leave it for years until the rains resumed. This has happened even in modern times. When the drought returned, it became apparent that the investment might be unjustified. Fortunately, Eliza Sinclair still had a lot of gold, and in the 1870s she bought more than 19,768 acres 8, hectares, of land on Kauai, which the family turned into a sugarcane plantation. This allowed the Sinclairs to stay afloat. Since then, they spent most of their time on the island of Kauai, where they also built a house with a view of the ocean and Nihau. They continued to monitor and regularly visit the island. Decades later, in 1893, the Hawaiian monarchy ceased to exist after intervention by the U.S. government. As Americans attempted to impose statehood on the Hawaiian islands, the culture and traditions of these islands began to vanish, but the island of Nihau did not open its gates to outsiders. Although Elizabeth had already passed away at the age of 92, the Sinclairs managed to prevent the U.S. government from entering the island, as it was private property, and the family made every effort to keep everything as it was. In 1915, Aubrey Robinson, the brave Elizabeth's grandson, decided to cut off communication with the outside world. It is said that he did this to preserve local customs and shield the natives from the detrimental influence of civilization. If that was indeed his intention, it was successful. Nihau is the only island in the archipelago where the original Hawaiian lifestyle is preserved and Hawaiian remains the main language of the population. Later, Robinson disallowed telephones and radios on Nihau, Firearms, alcohol, and tobacco were also banned. The inhabitants of Nihau maintained contact with the neighboring island using bonfires and kerosene burners. The island's isolation also helped during the polio epidemic in Hawaii in 1952, as there were no registered cases on Nihau. Surprisingly, this small and remote island left a significant mark in the history of World War II. The Japanese considered Nihau uninhabited and therefore chose it as a landing site for planes damaged during the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor, planning to evacuate pilots via submarines. The residents of Nihau, who in 1941 did not have a radio, simply did not know about the devastation of the U.S. fleet and the start of the war. One Japanese pilot managed to reach the island in his damaged Zero aircraft and made an emergency landing. There are several versions of the subsequent events. According to one of them, the pilot conspired with three local residents, descendants of Japanese immigrants. The conspirators demanded the return of documents taken from the pilot upon landing and took several hostages. The islanders refused. Later, during the struggle, the pilot was killed by the locals. One of the conspirators committed suicide. Arriving U.S. military personnel detained his accomplices. This incident had serious consequences. Trust in Japanese Americans was undermined. More than 100,000 of them were sent to special camps until the end of the war, and the events on the small Hawaiian island entered history as the Nihau Incident. According to historians, the decision to intern Japanese Americans was largely influenced by this incident. Decades later, President Ronald Reagan apologized to Japanese Americans for these repressions. Today, Nihau is owned by Keith and Bruce Robinson. It appears that they fully share the philosophy of their ancestor and try to minimize the number of outsiders on the island, as they only bring trouble. The island remains something of a living fossil, a glimpse of what life on the islands might have looked like without external interference in the affairs of the archipelago. According to the 2010 census, the population of Nihau was 170 people. However, these numbers vary seasonally as modern islanders often travel to neighboring islands and are not restricted in doing so. Thus, Nihau is isolated for everyone, but for them, it is home, which they can visit freely. Access is also allowed to members of the Robinson family and occasional invited guests, which is almost impossible to become. Once, even the governor of Hawaii was not allowed entry. However, there is one way to set foot on the land of the Forbidden Island, which I will tell you about later. The only populated settlement on Nihau is the village of Puai, consisting of a few dozen houses. Almost all its residents belong to the native population of the archipelago. 
the Hawaiians. Most Nihau residents live off fishing, hunting, and farming, selling shells and jewelry made from them. A small part receives state benefits. Many also travel to nearby islands for work. The Robinson Farm is no longer operational. It was closed in 1999, but they continue to support and provide for the residents of Nihau, facilitating the trade of their handicrafts and making significant efforts to protect the endangered flora and fauna. There are no paved roads on the island. There are no power lines. Solar energy provides all electricity. Forget about stores and hotels here. Food and industrial goods are delivered by sea and helicopter. There is no internet. Televisions and radios are almost useless due to weak signals and islanders mainly rely on recorded movies and programs. Alcohol and tobacco are still banned from import to the island. There is a small school powered by solar panels. There is no hospital so locals have to travel to the neighboring island of Kauai. Robinson's ability to keep Nihau closed is largely supported by their cooperation with the U.S. Navy as there is remotely operated equipment located at the highest point of the island used for exercises at the Pacific Missile Range facility on Kauai. Thanks to its uniqueness, Nihau attracts the attention of many travelers who want to be among the few to see this mysterious island. Tour boats from Kauai pass near the island, showing it to tourists from a closer distance. Since 1987, there has been an official opportunity to set foot on the Forbidden Island. The Robinsons themselves organize half-day helicopter tours of the island, landing on a beach far from the village of Puwai for lunch and snorkeling. These tours help support Nihau but deliberately avoid contact with local residents, and the island's villages remain out of sight to protect the privacy of the Nihauans. The isolation has given rise to many rumors and legends. There are claims that the closed regime of the island is incredibly profitable for its owners, the Robinsons, who allegedly keep the locals in virtual slavery, exploiting their ignorance and unawareness of the outside world. However, some of them have long been living and working on neighboring islands, speak several languages freely, and visit their homeland whenever they want. Meanwhile, the Nihawans still strive to preserve their culture, customs, and language. It seems to me that the philosophy of Nihau is fully reflected in the words of one of the local residents. Life there is good. It's very beautiful. Everything you need is there. You can just go to the sea, and the only tracks on the beach will be yours. As we reach the conclusion of our video, we sincerely hope you found it enjoyable. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate the bell icon for notifications, and show your support with a big thumbs up. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this video in the comments. Just writing thank you can significantly help YouTube's algorithms to share our content with more viewers, enabling us to create even more interesting videos for you. Your feedback and support are invaluable to us.